Hey guys, so I thought I'd make a quick recording today to go over a little idea I've been playing about with. I uh, only recently got time to kind of actually test it out. Um, so the general idea is ID based bump maps. I will explain that as we go. Um, I'm not claiming to have invented this. I've just never seen it ever, like online. Uh, I'm sure though there's plenty of people out there who have done something similar. Um, but yeah, so what's the idea? Um, so it relies quite a lot on channel packing. Uh, basically what I wanted to make was a map that uh, gives you IDs that allows you to change the amount of an effect. So not the strength, but actually the number of instances of that effect. So uh, I've made two examples, uh, one of which I'll show you the general breakdown for, the other one I'll just quickly demo at the end. Um, and so this one here is for like war zone concrete. So it's by no means perfect. Um, I'm using Substance Designer. Um, another quick disclaimer on this is I'm brand new to this software. I picked it up for the first time a couple weeks ago. Used it on and off for a couple hours here or there. Um, so there's many, many ways to improve the look of this and probably improve the method. Uh, but it does. It creates the map that I want and it works. So if you have ideas how to improve it, please do let me know though, because I'm like excited to learn uh, new stuff with this. So yeah, let's look at the map first and figure out what's going on. So this is uh, the map for the war zone concrete. And this map contains a bump, an ID for bullet holes, and an ID for pitting in the surface of the concrete. Um, just because I needed something else to look interesting. Um, but yeah, so this is the RGB of the map. If I isolate the red channel, uh, we see that we've got just the um, bump and Again, it's not a perfect map, but you can see how there's like information in there for kind of a little bit of breakup, the actual hole in the middle, which isn't sharp enough to be honest. Uh, and then we've got these little concrete pits, which have some height variation within them. Um, if we go to the green channel, this is our IDs for um, the concrete holes. Uh, I'll get through later actually how they're made, but it is actually quite a simple process. Um, anyone who's familiar with Substance Designer will have absolutely no problem with this at all. Um, and then we've got our blue channel. And this is just IDs for uh, the pitting. So what these IDs are doing is they are um, a solid value for an entire instance of a texture that I've made. So we made kind of a, a basic bullet hole texture. Uh, and the IDs, um, the IDs are just going in and kind of assigning one brick value to that so that when we're remapping it, we can reveal the whole thing. So before I go too deep into this, I'm gonna show you the setup in Maya. Um, I've also made another map actually, uh, which I'll get here. This is the scratch map. Um, I will very briefly show how that works in Maya, but the process for making it is the same. So let's go to Maya. So here's our Maya scene. We've got two spheres. One of them is for our concrete. One of them is for the scratches. This one's for concrete, so we'll go to that first because it most clearly demonstrates the idea. Uh, it's going to close these down because that's not important yet. Um, but yeah, so what are we doing? Uh, we've got our pixel manifold that's standard um, for what we're doing right now. I'm just going to quickly go in, change these values. It's on a random viewport. But yeah, so we've got a pixel manifold, uh, standard for tiling, a uh, pixel texture node, which is just loading in a TEX file of um, our map. We've got two remaps, which are just ramps. I'll get into how they're set up in a second. We multiply those um, ramps with our bump. Again, get back to that. Add our bumps together, plug into a displace. The displacement is set to a negative value just because I want to displace it inwards. And then that's plugged into displacement. So as you'll see, there's nothing complicated really going on. Um, it is quite a generally simple setup. So, and the shader itself is block values for pretty much everything, some roughness, some reflection, just so it's more visually interesting. Um, but yeah, so what are we doing? So we've got our channels here, and as I said, we've got the red channel, which is the actual uh, bump itself. We've got the green channel, which is IDs for the bullet holes, and we've got the blue channel, which is IDs for the pitting. So I'll show you kind of how this is actually working. So we've got our object here, which let's just say we want less bullet holes. All you have to do is just slide this over to the right. And this is the general idea. This is what I wanted. I wanted something 
that gives you a ton of control over not necessarily placement but just quantity of stuff it could also be helpful for animations like for example if you're doing a war zone environment you want the wall to be shut up you could just do this so rather than doing effect simulations you could just make a shader um, obviously you would want effects on top to add smoke and debris but um, this would get the idea across and it's, it's pretty quick to set up um, but yeah so we can move this slider around and this slider is just dictating the number of um, the bullet holes there are in this case uh, this could be anything though it doesn't have to be bullet holes it could be stickers it could be anything you want it to be um, and kind of a byproduct of using a ramp for this is if we change the value of the ramp it's changing the value of the bump itself so it's actually making it more shallow in this case um, that is helpful for when you're doing like multi-layered effects so the scratch map is a good example of that I'll show that at the end um, and yeah so that's what that's doing so how are we doing it uh, anyone who's been doing procedural shading for any length of time will probably know this but if you create a ramp and uh, plug a channel into the V coordinates of that ramp, especially if it's a V ramp, or only if it's a V ramp, um, you can actually use this to remap values. So the input for this is um, this guy. So as we're remapping it, what we're doing is we're telling values that um, at the moment we're telling any value that is below 0.442 uh, to be black. Any value above that is now white. We can add variation if we want by adding other values or using a gradient. I personally don't like doing that uh, just because, again, I want this to control the amount of stuff, not the strength per se. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is just changing the quantity purely, and that's kind of how it's doing. Is it any value from the ID map that is above this is now white, any value below it is black. Um, so I could do this, and we get roughly half of the bullet holes revealed at half strength. Um, and so yeah, we're plugging the ID map into the ramp, remapping that, and then we're multiplying the bump itself, which is the red channel, multiplying that by this remap. So this remap, if we view this, this is what it looks like. So again, it's just more or less of them. Um, I've explained how it's working now, I don't want to go over it too many times, so I'll leave that there. Uh, remapping that. So a quick little side note, it's not important, but might be for someone. Um, something that helps me keep track of how these shaders are set up, if, if I'm using the green channel as an ID for something, this ramp is black and white so I could use any channel I want but I, I prefer to stick with the green channel still uh, just so that if I'm looking at this connection I know what part of the map it's taking, i.e. green channel in this case. Um, and yeah so that's just multiplying it together. I don't know if this will display, this does display. So yeah you can see how because it's multiplying them together we're getting the height map being revealed and we've changed the strength of it. So visually that's what it's doing. Um, so we'll put that over there. We're then adding, um, this won't display in a viewport I believe, Yeah. Um, plus uh, minus nodes don't work for some reason. Um, but yeah, so we're just doing the same thing down here though. We're just creating an ID map for the pitting and I'll show you how that looks in the final thing. So we can move this over. It's just adding little concrete holes. Uh, we can change the depth of those holes um, and yeah so this gives us a general concrete kind of look so um, let's quickly go over the scratch map um, the scratch map is um, sorry that's a bit slow scratch map is just for micro scratches it's not for like big surface detail and I won't spend too long on it because the setup is identical red for uh, the bump, green for the large scratches, um, and blue for the small scratches. Um, something I kind of overlooked when I was making this map is the large scratches aren't that much larger than the small scratches, so there isn't much of a visual difference, so I'll probably just stick to playing with the small scratches for now. Um, but yeah, so let's just get this taken up as much resolution as we can so we can see the scratches. Um, with these being micro scratches, they don't show up overly well in the viewport, but doing full renders for this will kind of waste a lot of your time. So we can see these little scratches here. I'm just going to turn off the large scratches. Put that over there. So we've got our scratch map. And because this is for micro scratches, this is really just to break up kind of transitions in the reflection. Um, obviously, if you have it set to full strength, it is a very, very strong effect. But a lot of metals do benefit from having this effect. It's not this strong, obviously. 
Um, it just makes things feel like they've existed in the world for a long time. And to be fair, a lot of stuff has micro scratches. Anything with a hard surface will tend to have them. Because, you know, just brushing your fingernail against it, brushing against it with something that has like a button or a zip would be enough to scratch it. Um, and again, you guessed it, moving this changes the amount of scratches. So you can change the effects that you're getting. Um, so something, I, I intentionally added way too many scratches to this. Um, just so you can really see the effects. But yeah, something like this uh, could be interesting. You can kind of see it here. Um, change the value of that if we want to. Add more scratches that are lighter, so we got like scratch variation. We could even set this to be a gradient if we want to. Uh, let's go to linear. So now we're getting like variation. Every scratch has a different value. Uh, we could view that like this. This might not clean up enough, to be honest. Um, well, it's kind of working. Yeah, so we get some scratches that are uh, not as deep as other scratches, and that's what this gradient will do for us. Uh, but yeah, so that's the Maya setup for these. Um, I feel like there's something I'm missing. Um, if there is, I'll come back to it. So that's our Maya setup. Let's go into Substance Designer and just quickly go over the general setup. Um, as I said earlier, it is quite a simple setup, especially if you're familiar with the software. If you're not, don't worry, there's so many tutorials out there. Um, some of the best ones being from algorithms themselves. Um, but yeah, so we got our bullet hole generator and that's just gonna make a bullet hole for us. I'm not gonna go over that because I'm probably not doing a good job of it. Um, again, new to the software. But got this bullet hole generator and then I'm creating a tile generator from that. So this tile generator is just doing placement. It's adding some random scale a little bit of random value uh, based on the scale. So the smaller holes have less depth, because to me that makes more sense. Um, obviously do all this based on your reference. Um, so we've got that. Then um, what we're doing is we want to create IDs for this. And so all, what we want for that is we want to place, we want to get the exact placement of these and fill it with a solid color. Now, as far as I'm aware, there's no, there's no real way to get that out of this tile generator. Um, you can use flood fills, but then whenever you get overlap, it's going to fill them both with the same color. If you use edge detect, then you might end up getting uh, shapes within them. So what I found works best um, is creating, duplicating this tile generator and giving it a solid input. So all I'm doing is I'm getting the texture and I'm running that into levels, which is just making it as solid as possible. I've got some artifacting. Um, I could fix that by adding another levels after this to create a completely solid alpha, but for the sake of a demo, this works fine. Uh, and a better example of it is probably the pitting, to be honest. Um, yeah, so let's go with the pitting. So yeah, I'm creating a uh, height map, which has just some general information of this guy. So these are just like little holes in the concrete. Um, so that's given us our little height map. And then for the ID, I'm adding a levels just to create a completely solid output. Duplicate the tile generator and plug in this solid input. Obviously, for like if you're creating these maps actually for a project, you're gonna want multiple inputs. Uh, just make sure that you're plugging in like, you know, this would go into variation one, this goes to variation one, and then the other variations, make sure they're staying in the same place so that everything always lines up. Um, although if anyone does know of a way to get IDs out of a tile generator uh, without having to remap stuff and duplicate, then do let me know. Um, if that feature doesn't exist, then I really hope Algorithmic add it because that would be incredibly helpful and would make about half this video irrelevant to be honest, but I'm fine with that if it makes lives easier. Um, but yeah, so all we're doing is we are um, creating this ID and then within that, if we go down to the bottom, uh, we are adding a luminance random so that if we remove that, every ID currently has a value of one, then that would mean in Maya that our ramp wouldn't really do anything until you get to a value of one. So you can't really control the amount of them unless you want all or none, a bit useless. So luminance random of one. Um, something else that's quite important is obviously we want solid values and with small textures, this is a 4K texture, but obviously these are very small holes. So if we zoom into like these, for example, they are really tiny. This one's just like, what, like 12 pixels, maybe, maybe 10. Um, so 
image filtering is kind of your enemy for this, which is quite rare. Normally, uh, anti-aliasing is great. Um, but for this, if we have the default, we get this. And that would mean that, obviously, we got our block value in the middle. But when we're remapping this, we'd kind of have a growing effect, um, which would be really strange. Oh, I've remembered what I missed in my eye. Um, sorry for the tangent. Um, it is actually quite important that we're going from right to left. Um, so I'd love it if this worked. Um, that's a large scratch map. Let's go to this guy. And render. Uh, the fact we're going from right to left is actually kind of important. Um, the reason for that is whenever there's overlap, uh, I'm using a max operation in Substance Designer. So let's go to here. If I was going right to left, uh, if I was going left to right, what we'd have is, let's say we got these two here, right? Um, so I'm going to turn this off. We have a bullet hole, and then we're adding another bullet hole next to it. And they kind of add on top of each other, right? So it looks like two bullets that have hit the surface at the same time. If we do the opposite, so if we come on, get that there, what we're going to find is we have a bullet hole that, or maybe this won't work particularly well. Um, hmm. They're not stacking particularly well in this example. Um, but generally what you'd find is that you'd have like part of the bullet hole would be missing. Um, like you'd have, um, oh is it broken now? There we go. So you'd have this bullet hole would have like kind of this, the shape of this guy subtracted from it. Um, so it is important that we have uh, left to right so that we have the top values going first. Because if I go back to this guy and show the green, um, the top values are going on top. So we want the brighter values to be done first so that when we add other stuff, um, we're not kind of cutting out of it with the large shapes. Uh, I hope that made sense. Um, I did get a bit rambly there. But yeah, so we just want to make sure, back to where we were talking, we just want to make sure that we turn off image input filtering. To set that to nearest, and that means there's no anti-aliasing at all. This is normally a very bad thing, but in the case of making ID maps, it's actually exactly what we want. Um, so yeah, I've got my two height maps, one for the bullet holes, one for the pitting. And then merging those, so we've got our height map, and then we get into channel packing. So for the channel packing, all we're doing is creating an RGBA merge. Uh, I'm not using alpha. Uh, I don't really like using alpha in channel packing just because you can't see it. Um, I like to look at a map and kind of be able to figure out what stuff should be doing without having to go into the setup because you don't necessarily always have access to this. So I prefer just to stick to RGB. Um, if I need more information, then I'll create more maps. Um, which, you know, there's cases you can make against that, but just for ease of use, that for me, that makes more sense. But yeah, so I'm getting my height map. I'm plugging that into the red channel. Then I'm getting... Um, then I'm getting my IDs for um, the bullet holes, plugging that into green, get my IDs for the pitting and putting that into blue, which gives us this image. And then we can just save that out. And you've got a ID based bump map. So it's generally quite easy to think to set up. It does give you a lot of control. There's a ton of ways you do this. Um, one interesting way, um, obviously the bullet holes is an easy example. You've got micro scratches, which is actually what I originally created this for, but it was a really hard thing to demo just because thin scratches aren't that great at showing what the remaps are doing. Um, but you could use this for like footsteps. You could use this, uh, hell, you could probably even use it in something like Houdini for emitting textures, um, emitting like particles and stuff. Um, there's a million ways you could use this. It's kind of up to you how you do it. Again, I'm not claiming I invented this technique. Um, there probably is someone out there that has done this. It's just I've never seen this public. Um, never seen it at work either. So this could be something that for a few people out there would be really helpful to see. Um, if anyone has kind of suggestions as to how to improve the technique, please do let me know because obviously we're kind of a community as artists. So you know, we all like to improve each other's stuff and that's great, it helps out people. So do let me know if there's ways to improve the process or the execution. Um, I didn't spend too long making these maps, I think like half an hour for the bullet hole one. Um, but yeah, hopefully you get something out of this. So uh, I'm gonna quit rambling now. Um, yeah, let me know if there's any improvements and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.